Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to StreamYard for another week, being consistent with these Sundays. I'm Jack. That's Ben over there, just on the other side of me. And I'm going to wear my sunglasses to channel my inner Matt Murdock. Now, where's the camera? Where's the mic? I don't know. Just a little piss take. But, um, yeah, obviously we're going to be talking about Daredevil. Uh, probably one of the most earliest comic book characters that we know of, especially in the Marvel Universe. So the blind, so the blind lawyer from Hell's Kitchen uh, spends his time acquit acquitting or being the prosecution in the courtroom and at nighttime being a crime fighting badass. But there is a lot of problems with Daredevil, hence why this channel even exists, because we like to rant and moan quite a lot. Oh, so, yes. Oh, yes. So, start, so starting off with this, you know, might as well just get straight into it. There's a lot of there's a lot of inconsistency. There's a lot of problems that we have with Daredevil, especially in the real world, considering that the whole, I don't know, poison pet chemicals in the eyes doesn't really make sense for giving somebody superpowers, unless if it does give people superpowers, why was it driving around on a truck? But that doesn't really make sense. But with Daredevil, like the biggest problem, the biggest problems which I've had, especially I'm gonna rag on this movie because it's the Ben Affleck film. You all know the one. The one which people were were really excited for and unfortunately just felt like a wet fart of a film. But that being said and that being said, I found out something just a second just before we started filming this. What did you find out about the director, Ben? So the director for the Daredevil movie was also the director for Electra. Also, the director for Ghost Rider, and even more bizarrely, the Jack Frost movie that nobody liked. Oh, so, really? Surprise! But, but the thing is, right, this guy had <laughs> those were his four movies within the span of four years. Yeah. They were all terrible. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I could understand if there was like a different director that maybe it was the writer's fault, but it's the fact that this director had four movies in succession that just flopped so bad. Yeah. It says more about you as a director than it says about the movie, because at the end of the day, anyone can direct a movie, but it takes someone to direct a movie well. Yes, exactly. I mean, if you're going to take like, not like the whole kind of character, I mean, you have probably... The best, yeah, probably the best representation of Daredevil, which uh, we had, which was in the um, the Daredevil series, which was really good at the start. It was brilliant. I loved oh, it. It was it was beautiful because you couldn't tell it was a superhero thing. It was just a guy that was trying to do what he could with what little he knew. That was that's literally Daredevil in a sense. Yeah, but exactly. the problem is. It's very hard to write Daredevil as a movie because <laughs> the thing is he pop he patrols such a small portion of New York, despite the fact that he is more of a capable fighter than most superheroes, and, he does such little work. And despite it being the same black province as Spider-Man as well. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, with Spider-Man, he has the entire of New York. But yes. with Daredevil, it is literally a few blocks of New York. It's the Hell's Kitchen. It's like a very small portion of New York. Yeah, bas yeah basically, if anybody doesn't really know Hell's Kitchen, just think of uh, maybe South London. <laughs> Let's just put it pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. Like South London, like the rougher parts. But moving straight into that. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, just while it's still in my head, is the original costume, which we're going to dig into a little fight in just a minute. But the original costume, obviously, like we saw, which is like traditionally red, except the original suit was not actually red, wasn't it? Red and yellow, wasn't it? I or believe so. I believe it was meant to be like crimson and yellow originally. It was like a yellow mask, yellow. It wasn't a skirt, but it was sort of a skirt type thing, like a kilt or something. And then he had a dark crimson sort of chest piece and dark crimson boots. 
Yeah, because I don't think he had, like, I don't know, can't even remember if he had the full mask just then. I've seen, like, yeah. a few representations where he just had, like, just one of those little Batman-style, well, Robin-style visors. No, but it was a full like... head mask. It was a full, full-on devil-styled headpiece that like we've seen in the movie, the TV show, and the, well, the comics as up till now. But with the Netflix series, they also took an ad- adaptation on, I think it's called No Man's Land where Daredevil basically doesn't want to be seen in his costume anymore. He's had enough, but he still has a duty as a vigilante character. So he just dons a sort of very rustic sort of ninja slash just black top. Yeah, it pretty much is Zorro, but without the sword. But... So that was the thing which was like which I'm I'm glad like the kind of dynamics which they um actually actually went into a lot of effort to explain a lot about the suit, but except I'm gonna go back to rat on just forget about the series just for a minute and go back to bet the Ben Affleck film. God. Um <laughs> obviously you had like over time where unfortunately when his dad's uh killed by the kingpin, um by his henchman. And then obviously years later goes on to become a crime fighting daredevil. Except the problem with that film, if he's blind, how in the heck, where did his suit come from? Because yeah. there's like two things. Like it never explained what how he even made the suit, where it was made, nothing. Why his house looks the way looks the way it does. You know, if he's unable like if he's so unable to see, that's just like the, I think that was the first thing a lot of fans' minds, because like even in like the whole training. Uh, for when he's like home and his skills and everything, we never see the guy who taught him the skills in the first place. Well, suppose I was looking up the list of cast members, and there was a brief cameo of Stick, but he's never referred to as Stick. He's just a blind man. Yeah. But the biggest gripe that I have with the movie, as you said earlier, like the, there's the toxic waste, but. Like, that's not got anything to do with how his powers work. It's just that's what blinds him. Stick is the one that teaches him the radar sense and how to do everything, which is why it frustrates me with the design when they did the echolocation stuff. It made no sense. No, I know. I thought it was really cool, but not for Daredevil. No. I mean, at least with the Netflix series, they played on the idea that, yes, the toxic sludge did affect his sight in such a way that he wasn't blind, but everything was a red blur, and he had to really focus to try and comprehend stuff, which is why yeah. he just learns to be blind and deal on its other senses. Because in the comics themselves, it wasn't like an echolocation. It was just literally like static TV, but in red constantly, which I love the idea. Because the other thing I found really stupid was when Affleck explaining to Electra that he can see the world better when it rains. Surely, for someone that's relying on his sight, sorry, not on his sight, but his smell and hearing, the amount of raindrops would overstimulate you to the point where you wouldn't be able to cope. It's kind of like when you, it's like when autistic kids, because they have such sensitive hearing and smell and touch, when stuff like rain and big atmospheric events happen, they just go into panic mode because they can't comprehend it. Yeah. So the same would be to Daredevil, but then that would be the shittest weakness. Oh, we'll just make we'll just get a rain dance going, and then this guy can bugger off. Just oh yeah, 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 I yeah. Know. Just yeah, just like it's just like if he's like at his strongest, then just. I mean, I mean, why doesn't he? Why doesn't he just come to England where it rains all the time? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point. That's a very fair point. Yeah, but except like with Daredevil, just um, I'm not sure where they got the original inspiration from. I think this YouTube video might come a bit after. But there's a kid in America. I cannot remember his name, and I think he's been blind. I mean, he lost his eyesight when he was like a baby, mm. and then as he got older, he was actually able to use. Sat, use sound to be able to pinpoint like where he is and what he's doing. Like this kid's able to play basketball and he's completely blind just through sound, hey. which is a pretty, which is a pretty cool concept. You know, not it's clearly not out of the realms of possibility in real life, but it's just for Daredevil. It just it doesn't it it doesn't sit well. Hey. The thing is, like. <sighs> The problem is, is that they try to make the idea too realistic. That was the biggest issue I had with very early on yeah. comic films, is that they try to normalise it, 
but it can't be done. No. Like, there is no way you can normalise the idea that there is a lawyer that's blind that goes out and kicks people's ass like a red devil. Like yeah. if you t- if you heard that in real life, you'd think the guy was on acid or something. I swear. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you think. But the the it's one just like there was just so much. Even if you had an ex- even there was an extended version of um of Daredevil which came out, but that still did nothing to explain anything. They could have used the whole. They could have used so much of that film, like so much key parts of the film related to Daredevil are just missed out and just completely gl- get glazed over, which left like so many fans scratching their heads. I mean. There are a lot of issues with the film. That's why we're here today. But the two main things that I did love about the movie was that the star of the costume looked beautiful. Absolutely oh, awesome. glorious. Oh, yeah, and yeah, two, yeah. I love the fact that they co they co op the walking stick, the sort of C and I stick, with the billy club like it is in the comics. Because the Netflix show completely skipped over that bit. Like there's there's a really stupid scene that I'm still trying to get my head around from the Netflix series where he's tracking down these blind Chinese drug couriers, but he doesn't yeah. want to be spotted. So he literally goes down an alleyway with his stick, throws a stick in the garbage, goes up this fire escape, and then starts jumping from building to building. But how the hell did he not get spotted doing that? And Again, th- this was in season two, so he had the right suit at that point. So why didn't know, he get the I guy know. make the suit, but also make the billy club thing into one thing, so he wouldn't have to throw it away his stick? Because the other thing as well is, like at the end of it, he's got to find the right garbage can to get his stick back. Because otherwise, people can think, "Why has he got no stick? He's blind." And- <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's going to make people question a bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I and a few more problem, a few more problems with it. Uh, first of all, what the hell was Bullseye? Oh. <laughs> well, what was his name? Uh, was it a Colin Farrell? Yeah, I feel I feel so poor, so sorry for that I poor felt, guy. Yeah, so bad for that. I think role. he's even was... said that. I think he said in interviews before that he regrets taking on that role. I really wonder why. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even. I know he is Irish, but I swear to God, he puts on a. St- Stupid accent that makes him sound less Irish than he is. <laughs> you know when someone tries to mock up an accent and it just doesn't sit right. Is it that just like a pa- like a parody. Yes, but the thing is, I don't remember him speaking much. He just always looked like he was ready to just do something dodgy. It was the glint in his eyes. He just didn't. Yeah, it didn't sit and had, it right. And you, and you even had the bullseye in the middle of the forehead that was branded into his head. <laughs> See, did they ever explain what that was? Was it just a birthmark, or was it no, just? A... No, it was never explained. So never. That, it was just. So this is what I don't get because I don't remember the comic version of him actually had it branded into his skull. It was just. No, it was just on the mask. The... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, he did do a reasonable job because Bullseye is meant to be quite a psychotic I mean, character. It, it's just he played that role the best he could. I think I just you can't round him too much for his performance. He tried his best. I mean, there's a bit where he's got playing cards where he starts throwing them at Affleck, if I remember right. And the first thing that came to my head was Gambit, not Bullseye. <laughs> I mean, it's just yeah, because you had the um, the whole thing. Even when he's in the bar and he uh, manages to pull, and he pulls out like a paperclip and starts yes. shooting like these like darts at like a gu- like at a guy that he um, wants some money from in like at the pool table. Mm. <laughs> but it's just uh, just I don't know. Just I didn't. Well, it's... there's so much I didn't like about that. But yeah. the main villain was just terrible, absolutely freaking awful. It was just. <laughs> There's so little good in this movie. <laughs> like, I mean, they did as best they could. But the thing that I realise as well is that technically this is the first Marvel property because it wasn't owned by Sony and it wasn't owned by Fox. Yeah, so it, that is true. So let's just say for argument's sake that by sheer fluke that this was the first movie of the MCU. Yeah. 
how the hell would you work him in to try and make it part of the Avengers? Because obviously the Avengers was set in New York. And obviously, like, Daredevil had a whole arc, like we saw in the cartoons with Spider-Man. Exactly. Because the other thing as well is obviously the guy that played Happy Hogan was in Daredevil as his best mate, Foggy Nelson. Yeah. But, like, I can't see him as anything else but Happy Hogan because he's the guy that's so normalised to all the chaos. It's brilliant. But I just know oh, it's <laughs> oh brilliant. Well, no, like even though it was quite a different um, approach, you had something different with uh, Michael Clark Duncan, which is so brilliant actor. Michael Clark Duncan playing the Kingpin, which obviously very different um, approach. I'm sorry about I'm sorry about that. My like, dog next door. Um, but yeah, you had like that different approach of Michael Clark Duncan playing the Kingpin, which, you know, I think he did the best he could with like the role, but it didn't really feel like he was playing the Kingpin, just playing like just a big tough guy, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like, he is a big dude, but at the same point, like, it was hard to try and understand what was his, like, what was the whole main thing in that movie? Like, it was so bad that I can't figure out what Kingpin's whole thing was. Well, the thing is, just um, I think there was um, for some reason, Matt Murdock's dad was uh, I can't remember what what happened. Did he owe? Did he owe like the mob money or something? Or did he, he was to, basically like, join the mob, but he didn't? I can't no. remember. It was so bad. I just can't remember. It was basically he was a boxer and he was. He was more designed to like fail the um, rounds that he fights, so then it can promote new people in to try and generate money for the mob because the mob would sponsor them. So he yeah. would be the full guy, <clears throat> and I think it goes as far as that he decides that he doesn't want to be the one that takes fall. He wants to actually win the money, and that's why yeah. he gets killed. It's the same reason what they use in Netflix. But at the same point, they... I just can't remember what what was the main reason other than dealing with his dad's death was um, uh, Daredevil's motivation. No. Because I, I don't even remember <clears throat> much of what Kingpin did other than just stand behind a table and wait for the, him to turn up. Yeah, I mean, like he just didn't didn't do a whole lot in the film, apart from maybe two or three minutes of actual action right at the end. Yeah, but the thing is, he's such a big, lovable guy that it's hard to see him as a bad guy. I mean, he's the big, lovable guy that we saw in like the Green Mile. You exactly, know, really like soppy, very like sort of almost um toddler like character, you know. And it's just like I could not see anything else other than John Coffey from the Green Mile. Yeah, but the thing is as well, for me, anything Kingpin, it may seem a bit unfair, but I will always imagine him as the big white guy from the 90s Spider-Man series that was just this hulking big dude that knew how to take over the city. And yeah. while he was a good actor, I just didn't think he had the same sort of presence and motivation to be large and in charge he was just well, a guy that was sort of big enough and tough enough that was it yeah because you had like the um like the kingpin which we know a lot from the comic books and everything he wasn't like a like um like a muscle built like a muscle built dude he was just a great big fat guy yeah yeah but <sighs> It's just like oh, fans are gonna like. There's it's gonna be a high expectation among any like fans of comic books. You know, there's only a certain degree as to what they're gonna accept and what they want. You know, so it's a lot of pressure on filmmakers to having to do their research. And obviously, unfortunately, we no longer have Stan Lee here. So because he was like there on the film sets to like make sure that like movies were going in the right direction and that characters were being portrayed the way they're supposed to be portrayed. But portrayed. But now that you got like Stanley gone and you got a few uh, writers who I know there's like a little bit of a uh, kerfuffle with like writers as well, where there's not much creative control anymore. So it's mostly just down to the directors and the main producers. I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, 
it's it's now getting more commonplace that they are doing better research. But when it came oh, to yeah. very early on comics, like films, it was just adding enough action, adding enough explosions. Some explosions. And, yeah, and hope for the best. But the there are so many niggy, nitpicky things about the Daredevil movie that I'm surprised that they even got away with it. Because, I mean... The actress they had for Electra, she was gorgeous. Let's face it, she was stunning. But her cos but her costume, granted, being Electra, it's a very hard costume to do because it's not very very I mean, unsexist. You know, I mean, because like you've got like picture like the high like the high boots and like the trying to keep the PG like for like the short kind of <laughs> Yeah, like you know, yeah, you know exactly. What I'm trying to say, like, the yeah, whole, the, like, the whole the aesthetic whole, like, head, of and the whole like bandana head thing, you know, the whole aesthetic of her costume is not very unsexist. Like, unfortunately, it's still something that happens in modern comics <coughs> that a lot of female characters are derived to be quite sexist things, but there are ways of working around it, as they proved with both Captain Marvel and Black Widow, that they still managed to keep it comic booky, but still logical and reasonable. Yeah, exactly. But with, with Elektra, it just looked like she found something from Hot Topic or whatever like slutty clothes shop they have in America. <laughs> yeah, and then decided to just borrow Raphael the Ninja Turtle's weapons, and that was it. Because she had no bandana, yeah. she had a weird boob tube crop top thing, and some leather pants. Yeah, it was just and so then, far removed from Electra. And then it's like the thing is like when they got that fight, like that mock up fight scene between her and Affleck on in the playground. The fact that she's able to keep up with him, but then dies so easy to um, bullseye. I know. I know. <laughs> And plus, well, like when you see, um, when you see the Electra film and how like she's portrayed in that after Daredevil, when you go, these are two completely different characters. What is going on? <laughs> but then, the thing I could never understand is Electra meant to be a prequel or sequel to Daredevil because no, no, it's a sequel to Daredevil because you have the start of the film when she's in the back of an ambulance being revived. I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. So like that's how like the film started, but. Even still, like if she lost so easily to like Bullseye, you see like what she went through in like the film where it showed like before um like New York and everything, you see all the train that she did and everything, you go, This completely just undermines the character completely. Yeah. I there are so there's the thing as well is the fact that the main thing about Daredevil is that he is against the Hand, which is a ninja organization that is literally just trying to take over New York and their son. But there was none of that. Like, no. we don't get much of stick. We just see a blind guy near the street when Matt Murdock is first trying to cross the road. He ends up getting almost ran over. And then it yeah. takes him one conversation with Stick, and then he is able to cross the road and stop Stan Lee from getting ran over. Fine, okay, but like, <laughs> it's just it was so glossed over the whole origin of how he trained up to know what to do with himself, and for me, uh, that's my favorite part of a comic book movie. If it's ever going to be an origin movie, you have to give a bit of detail. It's sort of like a Rocky montage of like showing how they progress. Yeah, but <sighs> it's just it's. It's such a, a stupid movie. <laughs> like there are so many things that just seem to deviate away from the whole comic book logic that I do wonder if Stanley actually had anything to do with it, or as it was just went, yeah, I'll show up, just tell me where and when. That was it. Yeah, I mean, just although there's a few things about the film which I did sort of kind of like, which like try to be embraced a bit more in the um in the TV series, but I like how like the kind of grimy, like really dark kind of um, edginess when they try to add like a bit of blood and so on. I, I quite liked that. I like that you're going for like a much more of a darker uh, Daredevil. Although Daredevil, like from what like from what you've told me, like thing last week, the Daredevil actually has a bit more. Does he have more stories? A bit more interesting as a bad guy. 
yes, from what I've done with my research, it's that he spent more time as a bad guy than he has a good guy. He's been the leader of the hand at least twice, and yeah. so many other things. And it's like the most recent thing is like he's suddenly been given a power upgrade. He's now the new, the new Heimdall. Heimdall, which looks absolutely glorious because his suit not only is it the standard oh, daredevil suit but it's a cosmic suit like you can see the universe imprinted on the suit yeah but then it's like the problem is with all comic stuff is that they all or no matter what they change it always go back to what it should be but how do you <laughs> rationalize going from a god that can see the entire universe to just a ninja that works like a few streets down New York. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, if, um, yeah, as Richie and Eddie would say in bottom, it doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> yes, I mean, but, I think we're, I think we're all pretty much content with just chucking this film in the bin. To be honest, yeah. But then, only thing is, I have a feeling it's gonna happen eventually that we're gonna get eventually a reboot of a live action Daredevil. It's gonna happen eventually. It's inevitable. Well, from what I've heard, the latest theories going is that Charlie Cox, the guy that was Daredevil for Netflix, may do a cameo for the next Spider-Man movie as Daredevil because he'll be Matt Murdock to be Spidey's lawyer to try and debunk the whole concept of Spidey being who he is, which would I be would brilliant. But this is oh, my biggest... But. Yeah, <laughs> big butts do not lie. Um... <laughs> My biggest gripe is the fact that now the films are set in 2023. So the last we saw Daredevil was 2017. That is a time jump of six years. Yes. Now, despite it sounding like only six years, you'd obviously have to age him up. Yeah. So I would be more... In I know it sounds odd, but I would love to see him look like a more grizzled down version of Daredevil, where... He's so rattle, he's so rat tagged and looks so tired from being Daredevil. He like he probably retired or something just to take a break, and then he becomes Spidey's lawyer. Through Spidey, yeah. he comes back as Daredevil, and then it could create a new Daredevil movie. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see your point. Yeah, because <sighs> the Daredevil series was good. Like one and two was brilliant. Yes. The Defender series was a bit iffy because they used Elektra yeah. as the main bad guy. I couldn't understand why she had powers. It was very, <laughs> yeah, like it was very, it, it was very touch and go. Yes, I mean, Daredevil is a very difficult character to write. Full stop. Because the. I was hoping that the Daredevil TV series was going to be like a comic booky version of Law and Order. Now, I know it sounds a bit lame, but it would be more interesting to see like the idea of like little little known unknown characters that are like bad guys in the comics going through court and then Daredevil prosecutes uh, them yeah, in yeah, his yeah, own yeah. way later on. And they did that for season one. But then season two, it just suddenly went, oh, I'm just going to be Daredevil forever. I don't want to be Matt Murdock anymore. But the, the whole point of it is the fact that he's Matt Murdock through the day. And for anyone that a, ends up jumping justice, he becomes Daredevil at night to give him his own brand of justice. Yeah. But I just remembered one other thing that was really cringy in the movie was why the hell did he brand them like mules? Because he had a he brand them with the Daredevil poker stick, if you remember. It was on his billy club or something. He would heat it up and go. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. But why? <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it literally sounds like him trying to be Zorro. Like just instead of it being a Z, it's a D. But <laughs> I mean, the other thing as well with the movie that I found really bizarre was that he had that submersion tank because he found it too difficult I to sleep. Just gonna bring, I'm just, just going to bring this up, actually. Yeah, because between I mean, the two... I can, of understand, I can understand the ice bath because, obviously, he suffered a, a lot of injuries and everything. A lot of athletes um, use ice baths like, to heal their bodies hmm. and everything, especially like pro football players, professional wrestlers do as well. So I get that part. Hmm. But the thing is, is like he says that he has the ice 
bath, like water bed casket thing because he finds it too difficult to sleep because he hear he just always hears everything because his senses are so overpowered. Yeah. But then it leads back into the plot point that I put earlier about the rain. The fact that if it's going to rain, he's going to be overstimulated. He wouldn't be able to cope. So yeah. how can he be able to see the world better when it rains, but he can't sleep unless he's in a casket of water? That makes no sense. No, exactly. Because the only way that... He- the only way he could suppress the sound is if it was airtight. If it's airtight, he can't breathe. If he can't breathe, he doesn't wake up. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the thing I always wondered when it came to any comic book characters is, like, obviously they don't have a regular sleep pattern, but it's like you have to have a minimum of six hours, I think, before your brain decays and you go completely loopy, don't you? Well, yeah, because there's the FEMA, they always go out at night. But when the heck do they sleep? Or they, all, all these superheroes just insomniacs. See, I wonder if they're sponsored by, like, energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> you suddenly see, like, Spidey, like, like, or maybe Spider-Man just swinging through the sea and just suddenly stops, like, mid-swing and goes, Monster Energy. And sw- yes! Swing. <laughs> and just, <you> know. <laughs> or he just, like, in, or instead of, like, the spider, he just has the monster logo of, like, the claws. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's like they have a 24 hour like Starbucks or something. That's why there's so many Starbucks. It's for superheroes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why why do you think all these superhero like movies? They're all set around coffee shops for some reason. <laughs> Is that I mean, a little conspiracy theory to talk about in another video? I don't know. <laughs> do, 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 do. But <laughs> I mean, like we say, there are so many nitpicky things about this film. It's any wonder that this film actually got up and running in the first place because I have to wonder how much of it they must have thrown away for it to be filmed. If it's this bad and we've seen the proper thing, how much of it got left on the cutting room floor? Oh, I I don't even want to hazard a guess. But it's just... it's Like I say, Daredevil is such a bizarre character to try and cast because... He's such a bizarre character, full stop. Like, he's not often a good guy. He's more bad than good. He sort of walks a very thin grey line. But then, at the same point, I don't think he's had his own comic for the best part of ten years. He's been a cameo character in everyone else's comic. Yeah, exactly. Even, so... just, even just in the Spider-Man cartoon, he was a cameo for that, pretty much, for a few episodes. But that's the thing. At least then, like... That was a great episode because, but because oh, I think was brilliant. didn't he pretend to be Spider Man briefly in that episode to debunk the idea that Peter Parker was Spidey? I, I'm sure he did. Go, I'll have to go back and watch it because I really can't remember. I'm pretty sure he did because the whole point of it was that J. Jonas J, that J. Jonas Jameson was after Spider Man and thought it was Peter Parker, so he had to try and go through court to try and prove it. Or something along those lines. But again, it's. But what we know is that he definitely knew that Spider Man was Peter Parker. Yeah. But I don't know if we would ever see more Daredevil live action again because the Netflix series, as far as we know, has been just completely cut. Everything Marvel Netflix is gone, which is a shame. But at the same point, I can understand why, because one, you'd actually have to have Netflix to watch it. Two, it was so disjointed from the rest of the MCU, because I think legally they weren't allowed to say that uh, they couldn't refer it as the Avengers. They had to name it as something else, because in Daredevil season one, They don't call it, obviously, the Battle of New York. They just call it the event. Yeah. But it's just like, why? Like, Why do you have to add a layer of mystery to the fact that half of New York was blown up by Jatari and you had a green smashy thing and God knows what else? It doesn't doesn't take a lot to work out. I mean, just just like, forget all the legal... Just call it what it is. But then, obviously... I also try to track 
back in like the plot for that as well. At that point, Matt Murdock would probably have been what sixteen, maybe eighteen at the most. So he would have had his powers at that point. He would have been doing some training with Stick. So why the hell didn't he turn up in the Battle of New York? I know. It's like <laughs> he's just—it's just like I think like most Marvel characters get like their time in the sun. But yeah, anything to do with like Avengers, like um, any other Marvel films, like Spider-Man, whatever. Daredevil is actually never mentioned or never even thought about once. No, I mean, not even a slight reference or cameo. Nothing. No, but this is where I'm wondering when Spidey Three does get announced, who's going to do what? Because if they do play on the idea I mentioned earlier, how the hell are you going to explain that Mad Murdock is still Daredevil if he is even at, up and around as Daredevil? Because, because I, oh. I think by the end of season three, he gave up being Daredevil because Bullseye took his suit, and he was fed up of being the guardian of the um, Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, but this is my point with Daredevil: the fact that it it's such a stupid character that he gets so depressed so easily when he's got such a small place of New York to look after. I know, especially like consider guys like Spider Man who got the entirety of New York. Yeah, and the fact that his uncle died, the fact that he's had to deal with psychopathic villains. The worst that Daredevil's got to deal with is ninjas that just end up being kicked. I think even um, I think Spider Man's been able to go up against the Hand. The Hand is probably the worst martial artist in the entire of Marvel. Yeah, I mean, although Matt Murdock, you know. Uh... When, uh, like, at the end of the film, where Kingpin is, like, telling him that, saying that he'll tell the police, like, who he is and everything. In a way, he has got the best defense. Like, who's going to believe that you got your ass kicked by a blind man? That's a fair point. But then except, it's. Except then I'm wondering, you know, for a boy and dead, and got stabbed in the shoulder. Mm hmm. There's no way he could have treated that himself. He would have had to go to hospital for that. How's he going to explain all these injuries? Yeah, I mean. That was the one thing that was good in the Netflix show was the fact that they introduced the idea of a specialised doctor that dealt with all the superheroes in secret. I can never remember her name, but she did a cameo in every single Netflix show and she was the one that brought them all together to make the Defenders. Oh, yeah. But at the same point, though, it's hard to try and just go... Oh yeah, someone who's got the exact same wound that you just inflicted on the superhero just walked into hospital. By the way, he's blind. You what? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I suppose the thing is for us, it doesn't sound logical because for us here in the UK, we can just walk into the hospital and get seen, and that's it. But in America, yeah, because yeah, unfortunately, like, well, not unfortunate for us, but. Like, as Americans have to pay so much for medical support, whereas we get it all free here. Yes. But I think with America, they have, like, free clinics. So you could easily just walk into that and they just have no paperwork trail. But again, for if you're smart enough, you'd end up looking there first because yeah. that's the main place you would go. Yeah, you'd think. <laughs> I mean... I just like the whole the whole scene with him and Electra fighting the park was also stupid because it was in broad daylight. There was kids about, there was adults as well, but they were somehow not watching. They didn't have the excuse of having smartphones because smartphones didn't exist at that point. And he is blind. Exactly. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> oh yeah, wouldn't they go? Oh, this blind man who can't see. Bugger all can somehow fight like a major black belt martial artist and do backflips on the seesaw. And <laughs> yes, but I mean, the choreography for that scene and a lot of the fight scenes was very well done. It was but brilliant, it... like, regardless of like him being blind or whatever, the fight scene, the way it was choreographed, was so well done. But it was the dialogue, it was the use of the characters as a whole just fell so flat in the entire movie. Yeah. I I mean, it doesn't help the fact that they had Ben Affleck because he can't act for the life of... Yeah. 
He, no, I don't know because like, I'm, I'm sorry, Ben, but we all know you're not a very good actor. <laughs> it's just that he always looks like he's miffed off and chewing a wasp. He always like plays like the same character in every single film he's done. Well, it's like there was that movie he did a couple years ago called Gonga, where he's a really high oh, publicist. I remember, I remember that. I remember watching it. And I wanted to watch it because it sounded like a really interesting concept. But then I saw Ben Affleck in it and I just knew it wasn't going to be worth the while because he just doesn't have any other look other than... Mm. Like, his face literally looks like... Mm. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just... No wonder he was cast as Batman. That's literally what but, Batman does. Yeah, mm. resting bloke face. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. But... Yeah, the epitome of resting bloke face. I see a lot of memes <laughs> about that now. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how else we can justify this movie beside the point that it was a decent suit, the billy clubs looked beautiful, and the choreography of the fight scenes. So there was only three, that's it, literally three things the entire movie had. The rest of it just had like next to nothing to it. No, I know. It's in a very, very, very little writing, very poorly done film. Just, I mean, after all, you had like the same guy brought us all like the the other three films, like Jack Frost. I mean, the other thing as well, I don't know if it's just me, but the way that they colorize the movie reminds me of Sin City. Yeah, I, yeah, because um, like Sin, although Sin City, just I like Sin City. I just. I don't know. I can't really put my finger on what it was about it that just bothers me. I can't really think what it is. But it had that same sort of aesthetic for colouring, which I didn't understand why, because it was the same year the Spider-Man Tobey Maguire films came out, and that was full of colour, and that was very, like, full-on and comic booky. Yeah. So I couldn't understand why it looked so grainy and so shit yeah like, i i don't know i mean mind you if it was it was 2003 that it came out wasn't it mm, yeah wasn't that the same year as spider-man 2 yeah that's what i mean like it was the same sort of era as like the toby Maguire films and they had better quality of color yeah she had spider-man 1 that came out in 2002 and i think spider-man might have been 2004 2003 i can't remember 2001 was Spider-Man, and then 2003 was Spidey 2. Yeah. Um, I mean, just like when you compare that to even like the first and second Spider-Man films, they look brilliant. Quality-wise, yeah. look excellent. Yeah. But I don't know what else we can add to this, I'm afraid, today, because it is such a bad movie that I can't remember how it went. It's just from like how by like, the film went, how the series went, you know, how he's barely cast in anything to do with Marvel. I just consider I just consider Daredevil more of a doomed character, more of a cursed character. Yeah, it's... it just seems destined to fail. I mean, the problem is with Marvel. Both Marvel and DC have this habit where they like to copy each other's style of characters. So. Within Marvel, they have like an allegory of at least three different characters that try to mimic the concept of Batman. And then they've got at least two characters that like to copy the allegory of Batman. So you've got Daredevil and then you've got Moon Knight, which are both highly skilled people that you would never expect to be vigilantes, but they are. Yeah. But at least with Moon Knight, it was, it had its own twist to it. But with Daredevil, I think it took him a year, the creator, for him to come up with the idea of making him blind. Unless I'm remembering wrong. Uh, I, I couldn't say on that. But I don't think from the get-go he was actually blind. It was just literally Daredevil. And then it came into building the idea of Matt Murdock and stuff like that. Yeah, But it's such a hard thing to try and justify Daredevil. Because... <sighs> He just it's, it's, a, it's a it's a flawed cat it's a flawed character all throughout. There's no there's no getting around that. I think it's just the fact that because Marvel has such a vast universe of things to do, 
it's hard to just narrow it down into one little portion of a city for one guy to deal with when you've got so many other characters within that city. Because you got, don't forget, you got Spider Man, you got the Fantastic Four, you got the Avengers Tower, X Men. X- well, the X Men are sort of in their own little universe half the time. Yeah. So yeah, but this, yeah, but at the same time, they are in the New York area, though. Yeah, I suppose they are. I mean, yeah, because they're in, they're in Westchester, New York. That's a very fair point. So you got at least thirty plus characters for just one city. Yeah, and then you've only got one guy to deal with one like area of the city, but then you've got Spider Man that deals with the entire thing on his own, and he's a kid. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to try and relate to the idea of Daredevil as well because he's a lawyer. Since when do people like lawyers? Uh, never. <laughs> this is it. I mean. This is why I wish that they'd done like a mix of both for the Netflix series of like make it law and order type comic book show. So it could have made it a bit more interesting. Yeah. Because <sighs> the very first series they did, like, it was really cool because the, uh, the character they focused on was Karen Page, who was framed for uh, either assaulting or murdering her boyfriend. And they took the entire series for her to prove that it wasn't her who did it. She was framed for it. And then the very end of that series, she ends up killing the new guy that she's seeing. (laughs) But that was a great twist, the fact that it took an entire season to prove her wrong to only show that she could be capable of doing it. Yeah. But at the same point, like there was no other legal stuff for the rest of the series. No, so you go, oh, well, that's that script. I'll just throw that away in the bin. Because there's a really cool scene in, I think it's the very first episode of Netflix Daredevil, where they're in a courtroom and he's interrogating someone on the stand. And because of his senses, how he's been trained, he can listen for the heartbeat and know when someone lies. And I love the imagination of that, but I wish... They could have done the idea of like over the top overlay, like a heartbeat where it goes do 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 to try yeah, and just, see well, the just, pinpoint. Just sort of like when the when the, when all the dial when all the dialogue and everything's going, even don't even make it obvious that like he's looking at their chest or whatever or yes. trying to focus. Just have just a very quiet little yes, yeah. And so, like, you hear that, and just when he asks, like, the question, like, did you murder this person? And then when that person says no, it just goes, bup, 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 bup. it starts getting yeah. faster, and it sounds like a heartbeat monitor, like you have in hospital. Exactly. But, yeah. But mind you, I think we've pretty much reached to the end of this 48 minute and 16 second moan about Daredevil. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this, it's this been, my, it's been about an hour. One. Yeah, this was my little one today. So next week it's going to be Ben. And do you have any suggestions or an idea of what we're going to be doing for next week? Hmm. I am torn between either fan casting for the MCU mutants, because obviously now that Marvel Ah. brings in mutants, we can try and fan cast who to play who. And we know pretty much what characters we'd want to see in Mutants as well. And I'm and sorry, fans, but Wolverine's not going to be in this one. No, we are going to redo Mutants full stop because there is at least 200 characters that we could easily use. And it's just a matter of trying to fan cast it. So and we need to explain how Mutants even came to be. Yes, this is the biggest issue we will have for next week, which will probably take us about an hour again. Yeah. So it's been an hour. Jack and I are heading off. So any suggestions, please pop them down in the comments below. We always love to hear from you guys. We don't know what to do half the time, so it sometimes helps to have a bit of suggestion. So give us a comment, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and we'll catch you all soon. Stay safe and see you soon.